Pikmin with a forfeit win in the round of 20. Zenith Esports, though, got a big uh, upset victory over the second seeded team there. They come as seed 19. Yeah, they beat Gamester Gear straight up. Gamester Gear has actually had a pretty bad history of not making it to the round of 10 yeah. or round of 8. Uh, they've never been up there. Nope. Even though they've been really high on the ladder, they just don't deliver. No, they, they don't, unfortunately. But let's talk about the teams we do have here, of course. AKA, it's going to be fun trolling us for this one, but uh, they've got their own fun rosters and a couple of interesting champ picks as well for themselves. Well, we got to be decided later, so we're getting trolled all over by these challenger teams. Yeah, there's Potato Zero for AKA. He loves top lane Jace. It's their most played in their 5v5 ladder, and he also averages the most kills per game. Uh, JD was saying they have about... 10 plus kills a game, his actual average is about 7.6. Lied to us. He which is still pretty high. 10. It's pretty high. Yeah, it is. And so that's going to be a whole bunch of fun to watch for as well. And uh, of course, a bunch of great talents on their team. They're junglers top 100 on ladder. It's, here's the fun thing about the challenger scene is, is players you guys typically don't hear about, but are actually all plenty good themselves. So Stan007, 007, should have just said that. Uh, yeah, again, top 100 on ladder, right? Big Evelyn player as well. Pretty much all he plays for what it's worth. It's kind of thing with AKA is they have a lot of like single champion mates. Yeah, they do. I like the Evelyn, then he's like, oh, I got the Jace top lane. Jace top lane is actually very potent right now. And you, you see, go. boom, banned away. But we talked a lot about AK. Just finish up a little bit about Zenith, Zenith Sports right now. So Acadian, he was on Everfrag in Summer Series 1, and we've seen him before. We lost the round of 10 to Team Lolpro. What's up with that? Now yeah. he's back. I love Fine. that. I love that people come back even after getting defeated. Mm -hmm. like, we can try again. Even if it's not with the same team, I still want to be in the challenger scene. I want yeah. to compete. I mean, again, it's just, it's about as much as getting a good team together and being awesome. It's also just getting your name out there, right? Seraph was a sub, right? Barely got to get any face time, but you kind of saw him enough and he put the effort out there and said, hey, I'm going to try it for CLG. Did so, was in the LCS. Yeah. You've got, what, four fifths or th three, three fifths of Cloud9 Tempest got their names out there and people I, realized that they were really good. Like, out of the top three challenger teams from spring, there are only two players who, are, who haven't been in the LCS since. It's Vishu and uh, Yuzuki. Yep. And the rest of them either qualified outright as teams, which is complexity LMQ, or the rest of C9P, of course, we saw them. So all kinds of good stuff there. We're seeing the picks and bands coming through, though. Jace, Evelyn, Lulu, not surprised by any of those bands whatsoever. Rangar, Cassid, and Braum are dropped away by AKA. First big Ziggs comes out. Interestingly, though, Kale still available, and no one's grabbed it. Yeah. And the Nivea picked up now for easy. He played Anivia in the round of 20, went 4, 2, and 5 on that. Mm -hmm. It's also a very good counter to mid lane Kale, but it's going to be a Ziggs in the mid lane. And you can actually do a little bit with that. You can kind of path him, see what you can do in the late game with the burst. So it's going to be very interesting to see what comes out here. No Yasuo ban, no Kale ban. One of these teams is going to swap. Like pick it up for themselves for top lane. Well, that's the thing. It's 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 the champion roster. Right? It's what these guys yeah. play, and you, these guys are big Kale players. So uh, when the champions are like that, I think Lee Sin also about to go unpicked as well. As we can tell, Jarvan plus the Elise grabbed up Morgana insta locked here. So Zenith Esports running a very similar team to what they ran in the round of 20. Heavy peel with a Kogma in there to carry. Yeah, the fact that Braum was banned out though, they have to go with the Morgana Genshu, eight one and one on Kog'Maw that game over Gamester Gear where they ended up winning. It's a lot of protect the Kog'Maw. They had an Elise, they had an Anivia, they had a Trundle in the top lane, but this time they're gonna go with the Jax. All right, Jax does get locked up, and we do finally have the kill top lane that does come through for Kato Zero, who doesn't play a ton of it. The thing I'm looking forward to, though, is Sleeping Dog playing Varus. Uh, he, it's like his second most played overall in solo queue. He's been spamming that in ranked fives. They're happy for the champion. It's just a champ they like to run. I think Varus is great this patch. The Mikhail's being more expensive means it doesn't come into uh, anyone's inventory for another five minutes, ten minutes or so for a support player, which means all these crowd control AD carries get to use their CC throughout the mid game and push big leads out of it. I have high hopes for this champ. Yeah, also if you're up against somebody like Morgana, you always want to buy the Zonia's Hourglass. So you're kind of like, oh, I want to go Zonia's, but I have to get Mikhail's. Yeah. So it kind of delays that power spike as well. True. And Papa Chow. Fun fact about him, he loves playing mage supports and pretty much going full mage. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to go ahead and be one of those people who are Zyra. Max damage at the end of the game. I have the highest damage on the team. Just Leandre solo Zyra. queue heroes through and through. So you can carry the game from there. Exactly. Leandri's Burning Bush Zyra. It's a fun way to play, man. It's it's how non-supports play support. Is like, I'm just going to play LeBlanc support and deal damage to things. I'm glad that now that I can upgrade my spell thieves, doesn't turn off when I get CS anymore. So I just always acquire all the gold. It's trolly, but it's fun. Uh, so, okay. 
Champ second, of course, went very, very quickly. Uh, of course, it was kind of hard to touch on throughout the entire time, but the big thing for me is Zig Zarus Zyra, big area of effect sort of magic damage and setup Kale. here. And, of course, Kale, right? Massive damage, and your tank line is crowd control. It's like, well, you're in the air or dead, so comp works. It's basically the goal <laughs> here for AKA. Sometimes both. Sometimes both, yeah. You can die while flying. In the case of Kale, that's actually the only time she dies because um, she's always flying. Same for Anivia, I suppose. Half the time, she's not an egg. There's Meanwhile, Zenith, of course, very much peel for the Kog'ma. Anivia and Morgana to help make that happen. You kind of don't want to fight either of these teams in the jungle. It's like a dark alley. You don't want to fight them in a dark jungle because Anivia can go ahead and section off a portion of the jungle. Easy can set that up and just keep Genshu safe, split the team. Not a lot of the members of AKA can actually get over walls or on the other side of one. So they can get sectioned off completely from the team, have to blow their flash. And if they don't have it available, then they pretty much have to soak up all the damage. Well, something to keep in mind then. Hmm. All right. Yeah, there's just a lot of peel here for Zen. It's pretty much protect Genshu and AKA's is we have all of these threats. What are you going to do about us in the late game? And Papa Chow, you know he's going to be a threat later too. Yes, he will. He will be farming up, and he'll be a scary dude. So, Stan007, how tanky can you get on Jarvan? Because you are really the only melee champion on your team. Early invade, just get some wards down from Zenith. A slightly later invade for AKA, going to do similar stuff there. Both teams want to get wards down to spot the lane assignments. Looks like AK gets the better of this one. They know the dual lane is top that, side. That's they can uh, pick their matchup. That's all the lanes are there. Yep. They know exactly what's happening here. They see everybody. Sleeping Dog, Q's got Wolven walks out. So now, actually, they give away a position that both these guys are dual laning topside. But yep. 2v2 matchup is the case here, which to me is a good thing for Varus Zyra, to be honest. You look for that matchup, I think, and you should have a good time in that fight. Yeah, both of these AD carries have to dodge a lot of bindings, a lot of roots that come their ways. Otherwise, they're going to take a lot of unanswered damage. And it could cost them the lane. It could. And actually, keep in mind, oh, oh like that. nice dodge. Yeah. Oh. Damage comes through. More money for the Zyra. And look at that. Genshu, half HP starting out on the lane. Really no reason to even check that brush, though, is the issue. So just losing health for not much gain. And already, AKA holding a lead in this 2-on-2 lane, the one they sought out. Yeah, AKA wanted to answer this, wanted to have that advantage in the top lane. You talked about it's Varus and Zyra's lane early on. Kog'Maw has 500 range when he doesn't have his W up. Yeah. And Varus, 575. He can easily poke back and forth, and Papa Chow has a lot of harassment that goes through minions. Mm -hmm. Could and the, all of it. And Zyra never has too. to respect minions exactly. at all. The plants, too. Whereas Morgana, at the same time, not so much. At least you can W things. Yeah. That's about you it. Get your gold in. You don't really put any points into that. No, it, it's just a practical passive. Yeah. It's really not a big damage threat outside of very extreme cases. All right, both buffs have been completed by both junglers. Where is the first gank coming? It looks like Stan wants to force something bottom despite the lane being pushed up. I think this is a counter gank. This is him understanding the, the gank or the jungle path of at least puts her at the bottom side. And Kale's pushed up with a Jax lane. As soon as he's level two, you can stun and go for the kill there. I think this is defensive for Jarvan and saying, if you're there, I'll turn it. Yeah, if it was offensive, he'd be diving a turret right now trying to deny CS. And I don't think that's what's going to happen. But the question is, does he back off too soon? Or He knows until all. this lane resets, there's no reason to back off. You're at risk of getting dived up until... Actually, the more minions that die, the better it is for Zenith. Because less counterattack damage, higher oh, XP. He's there's the game coming in, put it to Jarvan's zero. right here. Does get stunned. There's a knock of Acadian. going to go and try to run away from this one. But it was zero. Very low on health. They're going to oh, trade Katie back low. and forth. First blood goes through. Mimo. Flash. Cocoon's going to land. But now he has no way out. The 1v1 fight. Who looks like it's going to be pretty good for Jarvan. EQ is going to land. Knocked into the air. More damage comes through for Elise. But it is the kill. So two go over to AKA. Despite having a level advantage from the jungle, Jarvan ends up with that kill because of the cooldowns and having to use the cocoon and the remainder of her spells onto finishing Potato Zero. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem, though, is that now it means a refresh in the double buffs. Uh, sure, okay, both top laners have assists now, so the gold deficit isn't as bad, but uh, it's still a real advantage here for AKA. Ooh, Jarvan's going to scale up. Papa has got to be a bit careful. Oh, 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 almost. You can flash Q down on Varus, but don't always need to. Didn't quite land that, but hey, lane's still going nicely. 6 CS lead for Varus. A lot of damage back and forth in this bottom lane, which is now the top lane. The duo lane's called duo that. Lanes. Boom. 
Sleeping Dog. He's actually really good on Bear. So far, I'm yeah. really impressed with his play and the way he's able to play this matchup very well. You can see if he can put any more down on these guys. Genshu out of mana. Thankfully, W is free, but he's got no other real ways to wave clear. Hakuho out of potions right now. Actually, both these supports are, so they're fairly killable on either side. Problem is, AKA has a summoner spell lead of one flash. They're getting more harassed down. Wow, good. He's coming back down bottom. He knows that this wave is going to get pushed. Uh, I don't believe the outside particle reveals. Ooh, look at that poke. Black Shield, not very effective against Varus Qs, but uh, did want to block plant damage. And this bot lane is going to push out, so Wild Mimo is in the right place at the right time. Question is, can... Oh, there it is. Nice trinket. And no sweeper available either. Now Stan up top. He knows there's no chance of a counter gank just yet. And actually, Genshu backs. This is greedy from Hakuho. Holding this lane by himself just exposes him to so much threat right here. And once his plant oh, dies plants. out, Papa Chow, he's got to be careful. He's pulled aggro. Shot. Yeah. Mm. That, was, that was a little bit silly. That's like Zyra 101. If you got plants, don't walk under a turret. Stan, go ahead and went ahead and put some wards all throughout the jungle. Put the pink ward in that bush that almost nobody checks. It's not in your typical jungle route. When you go to golems, you don't run there, run through that bush. Yep. Spies on you the entire time. Oh my gosh, look at this minion deficit though in the in the solo lane, in the bot lane. 36 to 13. Of course, yes, Akkadian did give up a very early death there and he had to be pushed out of lane for a while, but even on the way back, pushing a wave out, 15 minions is a really, really low score. Yeah. Potato Zero's Kale is going to vastly outscale him. Well, his level advantage too. Akkadian just hit five. There's a whole level up here for Potato Zero, who's already six and has the ultimate available. Look at Stan, he's actually going to get stunned up. Will not be any follow-up, though. They're going to stay safe. Pink Ward control a little bit there for Easy, the mid laner here of Zenith Esports. And he's holding pretty equal in this lane. Right now, uh, JL versus Easy is holding equal. It's really the side lanes that have all the action, and it's really both of them going AKA's favor. Yeah, and there's already a back that already came out from Easy. Look at that. Stan making a return for the ward. Got it. Got it. Looks like he uh, did one and a half shots of its HP on the first one. Yeah, the passive works on Martial Cadence. Yep. Makes some percent HP. 0.5 HP, man. <laughs> so effective when it goes down to half a health bar and doesn't mean very much. So right now, Akkadian definitely... Akkadian, what? Sorry, I just see AKA and I just blank on everything right there. Quick pause in this game for what it's worth. We'll be back into that one before too long. But also known as, of course, in the lead in this one. Uh, and honestly, I feel like both comps, for what it's worth, they scale similarly. That's not something we talk about all the time is who scales better because it often doesn't mean very much. But we saw last game, it was a race against the clock yeah, when the teammate won. Yeah, it was won. the win conditions of the two compositions. Sure. This one, it's kind of like we have Varus, who does really well late game. Mm -hmm. We have Kog'Maw, who does extremely well late game. Yeah. Then you're like, oh, right, we'll look middle, look bottom, look top. We have Kale and we have Jax. Just, mm -hmm. They both scale side by side. And that's actually kind of the interesting thing as well is that on the one side, and we talked about this a little bit, blue side, a.k.a., they've got just so many damage threats. Jarvan, of course, yes, he's going to be tanky. We talked about this a little bit. But yes, Kale, Zyra, uh, Varus, and Ziggs all going to be putting out a bunch of damage. What I like, though, for Zenith Esports, and they do something a bit different because they run the Anivia Kogma. We see it a little bit in Europe, generally if you're frogging. Um, I like Anivia Kogma because oftentimes they see teams screw up Kogma comps. Kogma comps can't just be like old season two Dignitas, five supports in Kogma. <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. Like, you have to have still a respectable number of damage threats. You can still look to peel for Kog, and Kog can be your artillery. That's fine. But you have to have other threats there, or one flank destroys you. Yes. Like, a Lee Sin kick loses the game for your team. What I like about Anivia is Anivia's a big damage threat. It just is. She continues to scale up, has great persistent damage, and Jack's in the top lane. The problem is Akkadian's not doing very well in the top lane right now. He's got to catch up for some time, but Anivia's good at stalling out games. Kog'Maw's got decent wave clear as well. You have eventually enough threats to make that work. Yeah, and the Anivia creates dead terrain, creates impassable terrain. Mm -hmm. It allows you to not get to Kog'Maw. Can section off a member that Kog'Maw just goes ahead and plops his little stomach acid yep. over the wall. It's like, oh, you're taking a whole bunch of damage. Yep. And you can also create a slow zone, a stun, a lot of peel options there. Yep. So I think Anivia is great in conjunction with him, absolutely. And it's also fun things to watch for as well, because I believe we've got the jungle Elise coming through on top of that one. So uh, another thing I consider as well is how good is your diving? Because when you have a team that's all 
damage threats. That means they're pretty much all squishy here. So, uh, also known as, again, full squishy comp, only driver for the tank line. At least Morgana. Yeah. Uh, so they can have some picks. It, it's Yeah, so not only do you have picks on the one side for Zenith, where you can go in for stuff, but also, really good Kog'Maw's. I saw this at Season 3 Worlds. Really good Kog'Maw's, auto-attack the front line, and ult the back line. It, it's really hard, because you've got to go back and forth all the time, you've got to micromanage everything, and you've got to look at a lot of different things in the map. But really good is we'll actually balance those spells back and forth, depending on their team for what it's worth. Um, and so when you've got a consideration of like, hey, Elise could jump Varus, and Cog can help, suddenly you really, really threaten the backline, without threatening Cog in any way. Like yeah. Level 11, level 16, your ulti's got pretty decent range. Uh, but a really good player can make crazy things happen, uh, and it can really ruin the day for people. Yeah, I remember uh, watching a Cogma stream. It was a attack, uh, I think it's like ATD God JJ. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. He played with 200 ping, got number one on North American servers, mm -hmm. playing AD carry with 200 ping from, I think, Taiwan. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. GPL player. Ridiculous player back Pretty then. strong player. Oh, I think he was a sub for TPA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. I think he plays now on one of those teams somewhere around there. But, God, he was amazing to watch. And to do exactly that back mm -hmm. when it wasn't a thing that people would do. Sure. Just throwing his bio arcane barrage at the back or the uh, Living Artillery at the back, yes, using yes. Bio Arcane Barrage on the front line, shredding them down, just mixing up the damage. But I want to see what ends up happening here for Genshu on that Kog'Maw, because he's made a resurgence, and people are still kind of relearning him for the most part. Yeah. It's interesting. So 4.10 definitely changed up the landscape for a while. And by the way, guys, if you're tuning in the stream, we are paused for what's going to be a fairly long pause. We're going to talk about stuff about League of Legends. We're going to tune back from the game for a little bit, talk about 4.10 stuff. Because, yeah, you're mentioning Kog'Maw's kind of back in. And I think the... The thing about picks is, is it, it comes and goes in different sort of ways. So to take a step back one more time, um, sometimes you've got like tier lists, and we've talked about this a little bit, right? When you, when you hear us say S tier, S tier is like the if this champion wasn't picked in the game, you would wonder why. Like right, right. Like if Kale doesn't show up in picks and bans, you're like, or Cassidy. Does neither team just play Kale? Like, and we like we talked about it in champs like this time. It's like, how did this get to eighth pick? And if it's not prioritized, and Cassidy's right a big one of those too. Just exactly. to give you guys more examples. Right, Cassidy, Kale, Lee Sin in the jungle is a big one. In this case, neither jungler plays Lee Sin. Mm -hmm. um, on the blue side, uh, Stan 007 is an Evelyn main, and Lee Sin's the kind of champ where you play it a lot or you don't play it at all. Similar for Wild Mimo, Elise. Um, Actually, interestingly, he just didn't go for it. Just went for the Elise, wanted that one first, and he said that was more important, even though he does play some Lee Sin. So uh, that was a, that was a prioritization thing, and that was a champ select gimmick. But um, yeah, typically there's like these champs where you're like, if you don't play it, why? Lucian, I think, is another kind of key example there in the AD carry role. But I think he's the only one. I think we have few S tiers. Um, I think there's more variants now. I think he was yes. definitely hardcore, like, double S tier right. last patch. Yeah, like, 4.9 was, like, if there's not a Twitch and a Lucian picked in band, you're wondering why. Yeah. So, I think Lucian's still there, this patch, and, and okay, people figured out how to, like, move that around, even though, like, Triforce, uh, or, sorry, BT got nerfed, or at least it, it lost its early game damage and it lost its power spike, and as a result, Triforce got less sought after. So, Lucian's still good. They've had a new build. That's fine. Yeah. I think the the next tier of really good and you'd like to play it got really big. And I think it's really up to which players decided to play those types of champions. Uh, and and does it fit into your style? Varus, I think, is actually one of them. Varus and Ash both, I think, are these, uh, I guess, brother and sister pair of, like, they are the really, really good, safe laning, because they're 575 or 600 range, long-range utility AD carries. That's really good. By the end of Season 3, you saw top teams like Fnatic, Cloud9, running Ash Varus all the time because you can play around that as your yeah. way of playing the game. And they do something that most AD carries don't, is they force an engage. Right. They are an engagement tool, and that's something that almost every AD carry besides them lacks. They are the hard engage, attack damage carries. And the fact that we increase the cost of Mikhail's mm -hmm. means they aren't shut down unless you get that item, which is... Much more expensive now. Right. We talked it, about it earlier. Yeah, it forces a bunch of item buys and whatnot. And now that, uh, especially because, and there's so many things that happen because of this as well, right? So, like, Ash and Varus, I think, are back. Sivir, I think, is back as well. Uh, I think you can actually go BT first on Sivir and get away with it because the shield is, is actually useful for her. So you, you get what you pay for, and I think that's worthwhile. Okay. I think Sivir's back. Partially, I think Sivir's back because of Skarner also being in. Sometimes there's enough champion synergies that you come up just because of another pick. Uh, you know, another example of that was like the old Soraka Urgot lanes, if you remember those oh, yeah. from back in the day. And then the counter pick was like you would all in with Leona and you'd like try to burst through the healing. And like there's all these weird mind games around picks and whatnot. Um, 
And so there, I think there's a really wide, basically to go back to the point, I think there's a really wide A tier of, uh, A tier of 80 carries. Kogma, as you initially said, among them as well. And I think he's actually the premier, I want to play late game 80 carry. The damage potential on Kog, I think, is so much higher than Trist. Um, just overall, the Q passive, the shreds, the W, everything from there, um, that even though Trist is safer, I would still be like, if I have a Kog in my team, I feel really good about myself. Um, and so then I was surprised then in the LCS to see all these Tristana picks. Because she is good because she brings something unique. She and Draven and, I th and Quinn and Vayne, I think, are the four that have knockbacks for Yasuo. And, like, I understand why Quinn and Vayne are very situational. Tristana's fairly safe, but even still, like, should be a relatively situational pick. And I was like, great, Complexity and, and LMQ brought them with the Yasuo. Cool. Then a bunch of teams brought them without, and I was like, I don't know why. Hmm. And I'm, like, wondering, like, who's basically learning the champion pools in time? Just go trying to go for the late game scale, and we saw Robert yeah. pick it. But that was with Yasuo. That was with Yasuo, but he had a really good showing himself, too. Mm -hmm. Like just the fact that she's a late game hyper carry that has a range and is pretty safe in comparison to the other hyper carries. Yeah. Because the other hyper carries are vain. Your range is very, very short, and you kind of have to play around all of that. Sure. Kogma, he has the range, but he doesn't have the mobility. Tristana kind of brings all of those, but knocks herself down like one little notch. You lose all of your carry. mid game for it, but yes. if you can play around it, then fine. Um, and then we even see teams try to play around that. And yeah. this is this is what gets even more fun is that. Um, it's weird. It's again. It's why I'm gonna rack on Tristan a little bit longer. Is because <laughs> the the ideal item curve on an AD carry, if nothing happened except you got to buy three items, it would be Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, and then either Last Whisper or Ruin King, and they're uh, pretty equal to be fair between those two items, depending on the type of champion you are. Um, and with very few exceptions, no one goes for that item build because they're like, I want to hedge my bets. I want to get like the mid game power spikes. So it's like, I'll go static shift first so I can farm a little bit longer. I'll go ruin king first so that I'm useful as a one item AD carry. And it's like, that's fine, but if you cared about your one item or two item power spike, why even pick Trist? Like, why not pick Cog, who's actually good on two items? Because max rank W does so much base damage, you're great on Ruin King W. Like, that's a standard build for you, and it's actually a really powerful power spike. Um, and, and these are the kind of things I think teams will learn to do better. Like, I rag on it, but it's because it's new. And this is the thing with League of Legends, is it requires so much adaptation. You've got to learn new champions, get up with the champion pools. Um, whether it's because something else is now strong and it's the normal thing and you want to, like, contest popular picks, or because your team wants to learn a new style and be like, hey, let's go back to the old hard engaged style. Let me learn how to play Ashwell again. Like, these all take time. I understand these are professionals who can only play so many hours per day, right? They've got... Um, a lot of prep work to do, and it's like, look, if you can only play eight scrims, how are you going to spend those eight scrims? Is it learning a new champ? Is it playing an old champ? I understand all that, but as time goes on, you're just going to see more picks because people have time to prepare them. Yeah, and also a really big thing, too, about being a professional player is you have to mesh with the meta at the time. We see it happen when... You know, just take Double with, for example, mm -hmm. where he didn't want to play Draven for the longest time. Oh, he's sure. Like, I hate that champion. I hate that <laughs> Then he picked up, and he's like, Wow. This champion's so broken. Yeah, sure. And he just goes crazy with it. Like that happens a lot, where you just don't want to adapt. You're kind of crutching yourself. Mm -hmm. You're kind of giving yourself a crutch you don't need, and you're yeah. like, "Wow, I could actually just destroy with this and run the full race." Yeah, and be amazing on those champions. Absolutely. And so when Kale comes up as like a top laner, you're like, "I have to play Kale if I'm playing top." as a professional player, or else the other team doesn't have to ban it, and we do, even if we're blue side. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing you don't want on a team. So you're forced to learn new champions. You're forced to learn the best champions, the most highly contested champions sure. at the time in the meta for what they do or what the strategy is. Like yeah. if Nunu and everybody got really objective control based, it'd be like, oh, we had to ban Nunu or learn Nunu. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things here that go into this. And you only get three bans. Sure. So you have to make sure you have the right champion pools for this type of game. Yeah, and it is something that I've been thinking about as well for a while. And in and, and general, I agree with you that like the popular picks tend to be just really powerful ones um, that are obviously worth learning, worth learning to play around as well. I think there's a certain there's a certain element of people will have their own styles. Now, certainly, right, if like That's if you, you think old CLG, like old season one CLG where they're like poke comps, it was like they're the only team you cared about banning Trundle for. You yes. didn't need to run poke comps yourself. You didn't need to necessarily contest Nidalee, but you did need to respect the comp that they could run and say, we'll throw a ban at it or we'll be ready to play a counter pick. Yeah. I think that element of the game has fallen off a little bit actually in the pro scene, where I think um, there's been a lot of uh, teams, and this is, this is fine, it's okay to do this, uh, who seek to um, imitate popular strategies and perfect them. Right, Instead of going out and being like, 
let me just think of like a random comp and making it work. It's like, let me look at the comps that are popular, tweak them in the way that works for my team and make them better. And that, again, that's the way that many teams can play the game and that's fine. Um, but, I, and, and again, for champs like Kayla, I agree with you. Where yeah. like, they're so strong, you should be learning them. I Like, I 100% agree with you. In, like, but having signature champions though. is really good. Right, but it's like, if a champion like Varus is like the AD carry, like, Varus is good. Varus is not mandatory. Varus yeah. is a style choice. And like, Okay, maybe you ban it against a team, and maybe if you can play it, you go for it. But like, it is not a it is not a champion. I think that defines a patch or defines um, a, a play style. And and again, like you know, if Samsung Blue comes out and crushes Worlds, and like, oh, we're playing Ash Varus every game, you bet your ass everyone's gonna learn Ash and Varus. Doesn't mean they're overpowered. Just means everyone's able to learn the style off a really good example. Yes, and, it's and, a great but again, example. Other styles exist. A great example of that is Tabe. Yeah, when he brought support Annie, True. And everybody's like, oh. Support Annie's ridiculous pressure in lane. Her range is 625. She yeah. absolutely decimates people. Sure. It's like, oh, stun, stun, stun. And it's like, okay. To the point that, you know, Riot has to go, okay, we need to turn this down a little bit because yeah. it's absolutely sure. crazy early yeah. game. Sure. And some of them are crazy. And yeah. some of them are absolutely crazy. And that's fine. But you look at other examples. Uh, a big one for me is the fact that, like, Again, Samsung Blue, actually, they're like, they're insta locking TF like every game. Like, oh, like yeah. TF and Yas were like their jams. And it's like, Dade is going to play these champs and be good at them, you know, and, and that's all kinds of wonderful for them. But again, you're not seeing every team rush pick the TF and Yas because people identify that these sought after picks are sought after for that team, not the game overall. And I, that makes it so much richer to, to, to look at and be like, oh, interesting. I think these mid, guys run. mid lane's one of those ones where you have a lot more wiggle room. Yeah. And AD carry, it's kind of like. I think, I think it's right there. Yeah. And we're going to accomplish pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Jungle, though, it's like if you don't know Lee Sin or you don't know Elise, yeah. you're kind of like, okay, we got to play the Evelyn, but there's a lot of counterplay to that in the jungle. Top lane, it's like, I don't know Kale, mm -hmm. so we're going to have to spend a ban on it. And then it's like, okay, then what do we fall back on? We got to play Lulu into that. Sure. And there's just all these things that make you very readable in champion select. Mm -hmm. So the wider, basically, what it comes down to is the wider your champion pool is, yeah. and the more it has that cream that's currently in the game, then you're good. Yeah, I think that makes a whole bunch of sense. Well, guys, hold on. Unfortunately, also known and has also known as has run out of pause time and has forfeited the match. So Zenith Esports uh, will advance to the round of eight. Unfortunately, that's happened here, but we're gonna take a break. We still have one more game to go. So we come back. The newly formed Wasabi Gaming takes on an underdog named to be determined. We'll be right back. Decided.